The Lakers wrapping up a seven-game roadie, four and two on it. They're visiting Atlanta. And the Hawks trail by as many as nine in the third, but Trey Young here facilitating behind the back to Kevin Herter. I like turtles. Trey just starts walking. He knows what it is. It's red velvet, Steve. Sure is. He's a shooter. Hawks down three. Danilo. Gallinari. Ties it up at 66. Then Young, John Collins, 22 points in the game. Hawks had a lead heading into the fourth. In the fourth, LeBron James. James step back. Mm. Hits the three. LeBron, I don't know what the Whoa. I don't know what he accomplished there. A little sorcery. Kyle Kuzma, corner three, leads now eight. <laughs> Look out. There he is. AC Fresh 21. He's got some bounce. Alex Caruso, part of an 11-0 run, and it's a 10-point lead. All right, Hawks trying to inbound, and what do we have here? Oh, we got some folks in the front row getting a little extra. LeBron's talking, and we know who you are. We've seen the snapshots. Watch your mouth. They were kicked out. Anyway, back to the game. Down low. Clint Capella, 16 assists for Young. Then Young, the deep three. He had 25. But LeBron James hits another three. Lakers lead by four. Atlanta trying to stick around. Defense turns to offense. Woo -hoo -hoo! Outlet. James gets the bucket there. Finished with 21, 9, and 7. Afterwards, James on that little dust stuff there with the courtside folks. I'm having fans are back in the building. I miss that interaction. I need that interaction. We as players need that interaction. I don't feel like it was warranted to be kicked out. Um, there was a, 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 you know, a back and forth between two grown men. And then when someone else jumped into it and, and, and said their piece. Um, and it kind of got blown out of proportion. You know, it's just like sometimes on the floor when two guys get into a scuffle, you know, or, or get into a little like Johnson and the rest come and try to break it up really fast and it looks like it's bigger than what it really is. That's what it pretty much was tonight. But um, the difference, we're on the court and we're not having any alcoholic beverages. Um, so they might have had some alcoholic beverages on the side. So that could have, it made them feel a little tougher than what they really are, I would say. Just but like to be Draymond, clear, you were, you were said happy. It you were happy that this happened, though, right? Like, you enjoyed this. Who, oh, me? Yes. I love our fans. <laughs> Laker Nation and everybody else that's against Laker Nation. It just, it just feels better. Fans in the stands is just, it's just better. It's better for everybody. Especially on the last game of a 14-day road trip. <laughs> so there you go. Didn't want anybody kicked out. Not talking about who's going to wind up winning the MVP. I'm talking about right now. This shows what I mean about Embiid. Okay. Embiid, at this moment, if I had to choose an MVP, I'm giving it to Joel Embiid. Look what just happened to the Lakers. I know mm -hmm. they're on a road trip, and they have a lot, everyone loses on the road eventually and all that. Who didn't play last night? They can't do it without AD. They lost to a bad team. A bad team. Now look at Embiid. Remember I told you, LeBron has played all the games, and Bede's missed four games. So you're like, okay, if they're comparable in value, obviously the guy who played four more games is more valuable, except that hasn't hurt, this, hurt the Sixers in the standings. They're number one in the Eastern Conference. By the way, the Lakers aren't anymore in the Western Conference. Mm -hmm. And what happened with and without Embiid? With that four games, since it hasn't hurt the Sixers in the conference, what that four game shows is what they are with them and without them. They're 0-4. They got stomped out by the same team that just beat the Lakers, who they beat with Embiid. So Embiid is the whole shooting match for the Sixers. With him, they're dominant. They just beat the Lakers head to head. Yeah. And by the way, Embiid was giving them the business to the point where they took him out of the game. LeBron shoved him when he was up in the air. Gasol gave him a little help from behind, didn't give him a place to land. Embiid came down so hard, he really wasn't the same after that. Sixers still beat him. They, they, they hung tough enough to beat them, but the Lakers came back on them. 
Embiid's value is so pronounced to the Sixers. LeBron is great. There's no question. He's up there. But he didn't have AD, and they lost to one of the worst teams in basketball. If you're, it, you're, you're, you're splitting hairs here. But right now, Embiid's the MVP of the league. I'm closing my eyes right now because I don't like when you give me a reason to come to the defense of LeBron James. It really bothers me. You see, I'm one of those people that believe that LeBron James, listen, I'm, I'm, I think LeBron James gets enough praise. You know, I, that's why I have to put up the ticket. Great husband, great should father. We put it up? You're, you know, I think we should put it up. I mean, great father, great husband, great businessman. You know, very philanthropic. I mean, the, the dude, he's unbelievable. Okay? And I think that it's appalling to me that people in his camp are disgusted at the fact that, oh, my God, it is an insult to call him the second greatest player in the history of the sport ever created. I mean, my God, to call him number two. I mean, <laughs> you're just stabbing oh, him in the heart. Oh, my God, two, what an insult. CK. You know what I'm saying? What Never an mind insult. what you're saying about <laughs> Jordan if you call LeBron exactly. number one. Right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But in this case, ah, there it is. This is the kind of stuff. This is a great husband, great father, a generous philanthropist. I mean, this is a director, a producer. I mean, the guy's phenomenal. I mean, let's just put it all up there. Let's make sure we get that out the way. But in this particular situation, power and then broker. that's right, Y'all Hollywood are power broker. Put that. Uh, uh, Y'all are hilarious. Uh, uh, it all, it's all there. It's all, all there. Good it's all guy. there. The, the resume oh is God. impeccable. Who okay. That? But let me tell you something. In this particular instance. <laughs> this is what LeBron, LeBron is just, it, this should disgust him, Mac, your take. Here's why. Because we got a headline there and we're talking about LeBron James in question, the MVP and all. It's, it's one game. And guess what? It's Detroit. You're sitting up there, they are a bad team. Oh, um, Max, that's what happens. Do you know the worst team in NBA history actually won nine games? You realize that? Worst team in history actually won nine games. Philadelphia 76 as many years ago. What I'm saying to you is this. It happens. And Anthony Davis doesn't play last night. At least 10 dudes played 13 minutes. You go in there against a weak team. You take it for granted. You take a night off. It's the regular season. If this were a season that started on time, Second to back to this, back. Would be, this would be December. You know, what do we care? Second this to back this to would back be approaching New Year's Eve. That's what this would be right now if the season had started re as regularly scheduled. All I'm saying is, listen, LeBron has graduated to a point where it is so grotesquely unfair to look at him in an early regular season game and measure him in any way. This brother is about, you know, April, May, and June, literally or figuratively speaking, the postseason. That's what he gets measured by. To me, what's alarming, if I'm Anthony Davis, here's what I would say to Anthony Davis, my brother. You're finally being recognized with the greatness that you deserve as one of the top five players on the planet. If LeBron James at age 36 in his 18th season is playing more games and more minutes than you, we got a problem. You should, that should not be happening because what LeBron is doing and what I believe he should be teaching Anthony Davis is that it's one thing when you're a star or a superstar quality talent. It's another thing when you're the headline. See, I love for Kobe, God rest his soul. I love for MJ. I love for the elite superstars like LeBron. He's included in that list. That, I will put him on that list. In terms of being a headliner and consistently answering the call, showing up to work when you don't want to because you know everybody's watching and they're coming to see well, you. Okay. And I'm saying it's a little you, unfair to AD. I'm not I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm not saying it. I'm not I'm not being unfair to AD because I'm not calling him out for anything. I'm saying keep in mind AD, that's the responsibility that you have now that you are a champion playing alongside LeBron. That's all I'm saying. I'm Kobe not saying Bryant. anything anything wrong yet. I'm just saying let's keep that in mind moving forward for AD. Kobe Bryant and LeBron James, off the top of my head, throughout most of their primes, usually played in the 70s of games. Like Jordan played 82 games every year. When it wasn't 82, it was 81 or 80. But most of the modern players play in the 70s. This was the second of back-to-back -back on a road trip. That's why I'm not killing LeBron, of course. And, and Stephen A., we're not talking about who's the best player in the game. We're not talking about the, the championship or who's eventually going to win the MVP. I've been making the case. I'm just, I'm just MVP tracker, regular season. 
which I don't even like that award. I don't think it's that meaningful, but people care about it. MVP tracker, regular season, at this moment, if you had to vote, Embiid. And, and last night was, you know, it is close. You right. say you shouldn't judge him on this little kind of... What did the Sixers prove to you by beating L.A.? Well, it proved to me that they could do, they could, they could possibly win it all if Ben Simmons would shoot jump shots. Um, I, don't, I think that's the glaring weakness in it all. The last play of the game, Max, uh, you know, essentially, you know, they pulled the LeBron. Doc Rivers called the beautiful, beautiful play uh, because they bring the ball up the court and then Tobias Harris picks off Caruso. So Caruso has to ultimately guard him because LeBron was on Tobias Harris. Okay, but you caused you forced the switch. So you had Caruso on Tobias Harris and then obviously Tobias Harris took him and sealed the deal with under two seconds left. And that's how they won this game because that's something that LeBron James usually does. He finds the mismatch. He takes advantage of it either for himself or another player on his team. And that's what happened. But Doc Rivers, you know, pulled that on him last night. Having said all of that, I just think that when you look at the Philadelphia 76ers, you look at this kid Maxi. you look at Tobias Harris, the way that he's been balling. You look at Joel Embiid, the way that he's been balling, along with uh, uh, Seth Curry, who I can't say enough about because he's really, really ascending before our very eyes. What it comes down to is Ben Simmons being on the court and being a threat offensively. If he's a threat, if he's somebody that you have to pay attention to, it's going to free up shot opportunities for other people, including Embiid, along with others. If you don't do that, you essentially get to play four-on-five basketball against the Philadelphia 76ers, particularly with Ben Simmons not being a perimeter threat. We know he could take the ball to the hole and finish at the basket and score there. But when you can score from the perimeter, it opens the floodgates for you offensively. And that's what Ben Simmons needs to do. I don't care what anybody says. Speaking to Daryl Morey last night, he acknowledged it to some degree. Obviously, Doc Rivers thinks otherwise. You have to, in my estimation, be able to shoot jump shots in order for you to win the chip if you are the Philadelphia 76ers. You need Ben Simmons to be able to be some kind of threat to keep opposing defenses honest. If not, it will come back to bite you when it really counts. Not during the regular season. Not during the early rounds of the playoffs. But eventually, it will come back to bite you against the elite teams. Um, <clears throat> first of all, you're right about Ben Simmons. If Ben Simmons could really shoot Stephen A., he'd be an MVP candidate for real. Easy. And I might not be taking the Nets to get out of the East. That's number one. Number two, you're right about Doc Rivers. Doc Rivers, look... Why is uh, Rondo a playoff player? Why is there playoff Rondo? Regular season, boy, he's not that good anymore. Playoffs, oh, my God, he's an all-star. Because it's that playoffs is coach's time, right? The guys who know all the plays. There's more mm -hmm. intensity. There's more kind of designed plays. The guys who know all the plays have an advantage, like a brilliant guy, like Rondo, who knows everything. He's like a coach on the floor. Doc Rivers has, like, the play out of the timeout that gets you the bucket. Of course, you need the horses. But the coach that can design the play that gets you the bucket out of the timeout, that team has a big advantage in the playoffs. The Sixers have that guy now. So you're right about that, too. But that's not what I peel from the game. What I peel from the game is this. What is this league going to do with Joel Embiid? In, a, in, in an era that absolutely goes against a guy of Embiid's size, right? And and because he also has classic back to the basket center skills, those guys are almost never uh, the best player in the game or one of the best players in the game or really in the MVP conversation. When was the last time it happened? But Embiid, because he has those skills and also all kinds of other skills, is he's still my MVP after that game. He was giving a D the business, Anthony Davis the business. When you looked on paper heading into this game. Anthony Davis and Mark Gasol. Well, you can't really ask for more going up against Embiid, and they couldn't do anything with him. So what did they do? LeBron James, who was not a dirty player, had a dirty play. Both hands on Embiid in the air, pushed him. And by the way, Mark Gasol behind him didn't give him anywhere to land and actually gave him a little tap in the back. Embiid came down so hard, Stephen A., that when they replayed it with sound, it was hard to watch and listen to. That's a Big man coming down a I've long way on a bad back. And what happened after that play? The Lakers started making a furious comeback. Embiid was not the same. He had that one nice move on AD where he scored, but, they, but he really wasn't the same. They kind of took him out of the game with that play. Mm. In the end, though, 
What I take away is Embiid so far as the MVP, and the Sixers won the game. Yes, they were at home. Yes, they had a big lead that got whittled away once it looked like Embiid's back really started to, to stiffen, right, to tighten. But they still managed to hang on in a game where when you were watching, let's admit it, it was like, Lakers going to win this. Well, They're coming back. They're showing them what a champion is. And the Sixers held on. Well, first of all, I've seen worse in terms of the fall. I've seen worse. It was kind of nasty, but I've seen much, much worse. Let's be, let's put that in perspective, number one. Number two, however, having said all of that, I would understand your sensitivity to such issues, Max. Anybody that has a back issue, you are definitely sensitive to those things. <laughs> Wait, I, definitely, I definitely understand that, Max. I understand where you're coming from and, and, you know, Mr. Elliptical. I understand. But in the end, here's what the deal is, Max. When you sit up there and you look at the Los Angeles Lakers, you look at, I'm sorry, Joel Embiid, here's what I would say to buffer your argument about him. Right now, Max, when are you and I going to sit here? Because we don't have time today with this Sean Watson news, but when are you and I going to sit here, rhetorically speaking, and have a discussion about whether or not Joel Embiid is going to overtake Giannis? Because I got news for you. Giannis in an open court is a monster. We get that. 6'11", with his wingspan, his agility, his athleticism, his hops, all of that is true. But he's not the true big that Joel Embiid is. And now that Doc Rivers got him doing what I begged Brett right, Brown guys. to do for three years, which was get Joel Embiid's big butt behind in the post and let him be a man amongst boys. Now that Doc Rivers got him doing more of that and, and Joel Embiid being able to shoot perimeter shots, particularly in a half-court setting, 